benefits of IPR in research and technology trends. This is more technology oriented thing. And you all know what's the property. We all have some properties, a pen, maybe your table, your uh, immobile property, like your uh, house, your land, these are all property. And in that property, there are certain things which are tangible, which you can touch and feel. In which some are movable, some are immovable. Your, your table, fan, scooter, everything is movable, but your uh, land, house, immovable. But coming to intellectual property, the main, main focus is that intellectual property are intangible properties. You cannot touch and feel it. That makes the intellectual property different from other kind of property. Again, coming to another question is there, you all have heard of fundamental rights. Agree? What is the fundamental right? Anybody can say logically one sentence, what's the fundamental right? You will start listing, I know, right to walk through the road or uh, so many things you will have. My question is what makes the difference between, what's the difference between a fundamental right and a property right? Huh? You need any document for a contract. Uh, that is somewhat right, but that is not the fundamental right, really. When I ensure my fundamental right, I am not taking anybody's fundamental right. Am I right now? That is a conceptual. When I am enjoy, everybody can parallelly enjoy their fundamental right. Come in the property right, there's a question of exclusion. I can decide who can enter my property. I can decide who can enjoy my property. That is called property rights. Once upon a time, property rights also was considered as a fundamental right. Then Indira Gandhi understood this is a big blunder. They removed it from fundamental rights list and brought in a new article called 300A. And now it is under 300A. That is, that is why now government is able to take uh, uh, place, I mean, uh, lo locations for road, etc. Others it would have been possible. So this is the two important properties of I mean, property right. Exclusion is the most important property. So something is exclusive and that becomes intangible also. See how dangerous it is. Something is not even able to touch, then it says it's exclusive, nobody can touch it. So that becomes the biggest problem in an IP. And what's the definition of intellectual property? Intellectual property is that which results from the creations of an intellect. If you are intellect, you'll be able to create. What is coming out of your brain is called intellectual property, not intellectual property right. And intellectual property right is the rights created on such an intellectual property, then only it will be legally valid. So what is intellectual property rights? Intellectual property right is a legally enforceable exclusive right or IPR exclusive right. Exclusive property rights granted to the owner of the intellectual property. Again, it's an important point. It's granted to the owner of the intellectual property. Owner need not essentially be the creator. If I am the creator, I can assign to another person of taking money. Or when all of you invent, that will become the CDAC property because you already had an agreement with the government that whatever you invent during the tenure of your, your employment here, especially when it's supported by the finances from CDAC, it belongs to CDAC only. Okay, and then another point is that it comes with property for a limited period of time. All intellectual property rights are for a limited period of time. There are exceptions, I'll tell you. So patent at least, what's the time of patent? 20 years. So patent is for 20 years, design, 10 plus five years. Coming to trademark, what's the period of trademark protection? It is perpetual, five years, five years, you need to renew. So theoretically speaking, it is not an IP. Then uh, Madam will not agree. Because by practice, it's all cleverness of the white man, I should say. They want, it is called industrial property on upon a time, patent, trademark, uh, Geographical indication kind of things came later. These are called designs, they are called industrial property rights. There was something called copyright. And this clever white man, I don't know, white man is here, okay. And they wanted to put everything into a single folder. They want to call it intellectual property rights. And the name has become common now everywhere in the world. Second, they want to, they want, they want to push it everything through trips into WTO so that intellectual property rights can also be traded. The intention is to see that, that I'll come across in my other, other slides. The intention is see that they get a competitive edge over the other countries, especially underdeveloped countries. So will that become a success? The second question. They thought that you now all these lean Indian men will not really be fighting inside the arena. But we are all started fighting now. 
maybe india is a person who is not that much capable you see brazil you see any country of that you see china they are violators they'll play half the game outside the ring and half the game inside the ring <laughs> we have made in indian we make all the laws available then only we think of protection but china violate all the rules then ensure that they get up edge and then do it that's the difference okay and as i said earlier ipr can be assigned it's just like you selling your house you can assign your ip to another person or just like you are leasing your property you can license to another person that's the advantage of ip just like you are having any other property so these are various kinds of intellectual property rights copyright and related rights is one category the remaining is called industrial property rights nowadays nobody is using the word industrial property rights and then comes patents rights on design i will use rights right word there are many people using the word design fact only and use the right word copyright on the design is the right word to use rights on the design trademark brand builders right geography integration i see layout and design there are many so i'm not going to explanation of these things because my job is a different one i'm going to connect between r and d and patents again there are certain important things i need to discuss that is why about patent patent is supposed to be the most useful and most dangerous kind of it so it is our job to ensure that this is not becoming dangerous so patent is also an exclusive right to prevent third parties so patent gives an exclusive right to prevent third parties from making it using it selling it offering for sale even if you are not selling if you are stocking in the market for selling that itself is an infringement of patent and then it is granted by the government if india grants a patent as well only within indian territory that is why if you want to get a patent in us you need to separately apply even if you are applying through a pct route there is nothing called international patent that you are simply applying through international patent for getting single patent application filed in all the countries you need to enter the national phase and prosecute it you have to spend money also then only you will get paid separate patents there grant by the government is the territory and then for limited period as 20 years for the commercial exploitation why it is granted it is to ensure that commercial exploitation of the patent is done and in consideration of full disclosure of the patent you need to completely disclose the invention through patent office remember if you publish it elsewhere and then ask for a patent patent cannot be given i was in when i was in patent office chennai there are many cases coming from kerala they come with paper cuttings i have something invented i already had a press conference so if it's already disclosed to public patent cannot be given because it's already come to the public domain exclusivity cannot be given though patent is not a monopoly patents are exclusive rights so exclusivity cannot be granted so remember if you want both go for a patent first then only you should publish so patent is an award for the inventor and a reward for the investor so you you have to solve an invention which is prevailing in the industry and then find a solution that is what we want a why patent is an award for the inventor because inventor also get recognition just case in the case of a publication however uh, it's a reward for the invest investor because the money person who is some companies will not invest in an invention unless there is a protection offered i'll tell you an example why how the society is benefited you all have mobile phones in fact wonderful mobile phones your mobile phones are nowadays more than a computer you all remember the kind of uh, mobile if any of you had possessed some 25 years back probably you might have on the list um, okay that was some 20 25 years that bulky mobile phone incoming is uh, incoming is costly outgoing is also costly he would carry it was bulky like this he came up to pager a pager lasted only for one year two years pager had a short life only for getting an sms you had a pager which was 10000 rupees costing I had a pager when I was there is a pretty big, and the pager lasted uh, just uh, one year, two years. Then came the mobile phones. Now, how the mobile phone change over happened in all the twenty years? It's all because the patent protections are available. When I have a patent protection uh, taken, my competitors, rivals, will not be in a position to copy the technology. If they copy the technology, they'll be taken to the court. So what they would do? They would go back and then. come out with a better mobile that is cheaper also then what will happen i will lose my market then i will go and tell my r&d team that a better mobile has come into the market you need to now go back and ensure that you come out with a much better one so they would go back and come out with a much much better technology so there are only two companies i said there are thousands of companies competing in this area but technological innovations are happening on a day to day basis and this is how 
society is getting benefit. Nobody is getting to enjoy the monopoly. Nobody should get the benefit of monopoly. That I'll tell you how monopoly happens. And this is simplicity is no bar for patenting. Your invention can be very simple. You should have a novelty inventive step technical application. This was invented by one uh, amateur inventor in Kayangulam. What he has done is you know, he has inserted a case, inserted an iron cage, he has placed uh, some pheromone or something for attracting mosquitoes. And this cage, iron cage, is electrified. So when electrified using uh, solar cells. And when the mosquito enters, mosquito gets electrocuted. So invention is so simple. But it has got invention, it has got a novelty, it has got an inventive step, it has also has an industrial application. So patent is, it's eligible for a patent. So invention needs to be applicable to the society. But there are certain inventions which are not patentable in India. First of all, if it is, doesn't have novelty or inventive strip, patent will not be granted. Then if inventions are contrary to well-established natural laws, so suppose somebody says, comes and says that he has got an invention uh, which is automatically, a motor will be running automatically without any electricity. So that cannot happen. That kind of arbitrary cases are not allowed. And mere discovery, someone is inventing discovery only, it's not an invention at all, just finding out something that will not be allowed a patent. And something contrary to public order, like if I invent a letter bomb, letter bomb is also a fantastic invention, but there's no use or utility for the public. So such kind of things will not be, because that's against the public order. And uh, use of, say, non-substance, if some, somebody is finding a second use only, uh, if otherwise it's a medical use. Then uh, method of agriculture and horticultural methods are not allowed to patent it, but there is a separate law for allowing protecting the plants, plant variety law, but not under the patent. Then any process for medicinal, surgical, curatic, prophylactic kind of thing. That means if a doctor is allowed to get a patent for a diagnostic method, then he will take a monopoly on that. He will prevent all others. So such kind of things will not be allowed. Plants or animals as such will not be allowed to patent. Microorganisms are allowed to patent provided they are genetically modified organisms. If you bring out a genetically modified organism, we can think of that. And then uh, any, any pay work which can be protected by any other IPR cannot be protected under IPR, under patent, that's sure. Then, uh, uh, then traditional knowledge. Traditional knowledge is something entirely different. And a traditional knowledge is orally transmitted knowledge from one generation, it's not recorded anywhere. That is why patent protection cannot be extended to traditional knowledge. It should not be at all also. When anything, some, some of the inventions related to atomic energy cannot be. These are all Indian conditions. There, I want to add that somebody asked about uh, cost, copyright for a software. Copyright for a software is not a sufficient protection. It's only a necessary protection. Why is it not a sufficient protection? Because your, your real work will be happening when it runs on a computer. When you plot the text, that is not enough. The so code protection is not enough for a for its uh, protection. But in, why India has not allowed, the Indian software R&D has not developed to that extent. So if we allow uh, the patenting of uh, Indian software, then that will destroy the Indian software assets, software industry assets. That is why India has not allowed. Maybe in future it will come up, but countries like US, they allow it. US, Germany, many countries, they allow it. And many people think, oh, it's patent. Patent is only a barking dog. I do agree. It's a barking dog. It has got a very sharp teeth, very strong teeth. Don't get its bite. If it bites, funny it Okay. So that's what it says here. Polaroid, example. Polaroid was an in inventor of instant camera. They obtained broad patents in 1960s. Kodak started developing on technology to beat Polaroid patents. So what happened? Polaroid was the first company to invent instant camera. And then Kodak started developing their own technology. They did not copy their own technology, but invention is the same. It's the invention of the instant camera. When Kodak brought their things to the market, they purchased a copy. Polaroid purchased one or two copies of the this one and disassembled. They understood the same invention. So they sued against, uh, sued against Kodak. And uh, court finally said, see, for, the, for the, out of 20 years, only five years is over, Mr. Kodak. Next 15 years, you stay out of market with this product. You cannot sell this product. Not only that, you already made some profit of 1 billion. 1 billion is a huge amount. 1 billion from the sales of this instant camera. Give that money to Polaroid. So this is where if it buys, this patient <laughs> becomes very relevant. That is why we all have to be very careful in dealing with IP.
We need to also need to teach the next generation kids. If they want to get a job, they need to definitely have the knowledge of IT. Otherwise, not even a private company will take for a job. At the same time, patents do not prevent research on something or education on something. That is why when a patent is filed, that also enables all the persons to study it, repeat it, come out with a better invention. Don't, no need of copying it. But you should be able to do research and come out with a better product. And then what's the danger? That's the most important thing. More, in most of the advanced technologies, our country or least developed countries are many years behind developed countries. So for example, let us take the space programs. How many years India is behind US? Rough idea? More than 60 years. Because in 1970, they could arrange to land a man on the moon. What is our latest contribution that re-entry navigation? In the re-entry navigation, we could send a capsule outside, bring it to sea, not even on Earth. We have another experiment recently happened that is to have a flight landed. So how many years will it take for us even to send a Leica, even to send a dog to uh, where moon to experiment? It will take another 20, 20, 25 years more. From 1970 to 2015, you assume how many years of difference. So that is where the technology divide is there. So when such, you know, such a technology divide is there, so how the developed countries will capitalize, they will make the products in bulk in their countries and then import to, or what is the, the right word is not say import, that dump it to the other the underdeveloped countries for the huge profit they want. That is what they want. That is where they want to include IPR as part of the uh, WTO and all. There is no other reason for that. But now there are many countries picked up. China picked up, even though they had violations in the beginning. Then Brazil picked up. How far India picked up is a big question. We are uh, like big pandas in the paper, uh, not in reality. How many of our inventions are really worth in achieving greater roles? It's a real question. That is where we need to bridge the gap. Otherwise, this will become very dangerous. It will become a monopoly. And now, coming to the real question of what's the relevance of IPR in research and technology transfer, if we look at the business which is done by uh, major research organizations, there are various ways in which research organizations can make money. One is by selling technologies. Of course, if you are a mature technology, you can sell it. There are many companies or even research organizations, they develop IP only, they do not for, go further in developing it. They can sell the IP as such. It is like selling your baby upfront. Your own year, oh, your own, one month old baby, you can sell and get the money. Then you need not have to spend the money for growing the baby, right? It is similar to that. So if you have IP, IP is not developed in the technology, you can always think of selling the IP and get some money. And there are many, many people, uh, many companies do that. But there is a, a, a bit of caution there. Such baby, which IP which you are speaking, should not be in the core area of your research. If that IP is in the core area of your research and if you sell the IP, then the other company will stop you from doing further research on that. Because patent is a right to prevent others from, I already mentioned, patent is a right to prevent others from using your IP. So if you have IP which is your core area and if you sell your IP, the person buying the IP will stop you doing the main research. But if your, IP, if your IP is in the fringe areas, then it's possible for you to sell the IP. So this IP is, selling of IP is one of the important factors where institutes can uh, make revenue. The others like incubation centers, if you have like something great, we can also think of having incubation centers. Then uh, uh, and we taking contract projects like sponsored project, consultancy project. These are all very useful things where revenue can be generated. Or if your equipment, equipment can be uh, given to others on a rent. Then there should be an IPR cell set up in your organization. I think you already have one. And some of the responsibilities of your IPR cell, and when to counter such an IPR cell, this general, general awareness to all the people at what time. See, if you do, do that, if you, when you really projectize your particular thing, when you formulate a project itself, you need, you need to formulate the IP, not on a later stage. So that inclusive comes, your R&D activities, and then 
also other thing and wherever it, like until it is licensing happens there's incubation stages for ip also the, from the project formulation stage to project reviewing stage and also the project closing stage you need to completely leverage the ip and then comes if you are going to start a particular work before that itself you contact your ipr cell because you need to search whether somebody else is already doing it parallelly somewhere part of the world why should we reinvent the wheel if somebody else is already doing that stop that work and go for some other work which is useful for you and second thing important second important thing for you is the maintenance of all the project reports you should be very clearly strictly maintaining all the project reports from the initiation of idea to the list of innovators keeping day to day work done recorded properly in your work diary signed by the innovator also signed by the project leader and on month to month basis signed by the director of the institute it shall be externally audited and kept as a proof then only if there is a dispute available that will serve as a proof so this is very very important then there is a crucial point at which ip has to be if we can even take an ip before that but there is a crucial point at which ip has to be because at the time when your idea is started the risk is very high that you may even drop it in between but the cost is very low at that time but over the time you will see the risk comes down the cost will start escalating before that at least you should have taken an ip protection if you're not taking a patent at that time nobody will invest on you on a later stage also especially when you go for higher funding like angel funding or beyond that uh, venture capital funding nobody will fund you if you do not have an ip and all the time government may not be able to fund all the big projects there you need to go for alternate options and then comes eureka you come to know that your invention has happened but you need to again contact your ipr cell to confirm whether it's eureka maybe parallelly someone started later than you might have invented earlier than you so you need to again do the ipr search with the sophisticated tools then there's something called invention disclosure form to be filled in and the invention disclosure form will be closely looked into by your ipr cell details will be screened then after which uh, all the process will happen on that so novelty of invention need to be looked into you have to really look into the novelty of the invention or the novelty novelty is on which which has not been disclosed in the prior art wherein prior art means everything published everything published in any language is part of prior art so if it is there your novelty is lost there is one more parameter you need to look into that is called inventive step inventive step is like suppose you have an invention all your inventions disclosed in a single document it's called novelty lost if your if your invention has many inventive points if all your inventions are disclosed in different different documents you say that inventive step is lost see for example i have put an example here somebody has invented a call uh, a lamp post which can be disassembled and taken anywhere the advantage is easiness of transportation novelty is of course there then if someone is on, on searching you you come across a document which says that blind men use of some kind of walking stick which can be disassembled and assembled anywhere is no transportation that may destroy your inventive step so inventive step is a many inventive features are available in different different documents that's the meaning of inventive step then what you have to do you have to submit your patent application you have to draft the patent application and then you have to do the assignment of the inventor because if it is cdac it has to assign to the cdac in the same form then you have to file either a provisional specification or a complete specification along with that if your research is not complete then you need to file a provisional specification disclosing as many as many details as possible then you will get time up to 12 months for doing your complete specification okay and this all will go like the every patent application form 1 should be accompanied by a provisional complete specification and the first page of the form 2 should be should contain title of the invention name address nationality and then a preamble of the description it looks like this if the provisional specification you can see that provisional specification there is a title and there is name address and nationality then it says the following specification describes the nature of this invention this is a stag used if it is a complete specification we will say that following specification particularly describes the nature of the invention manner in which it is performed that you are making a statement where 
complete disclosure of the invention is made here. If you are using a biological material, biological material needs to be deposited. If you are using any part, otherwise you have to completely disclose it. In the chemical cases, with examples. In normal engineering case, it's easy to display. Electrical engineering case, it's easy to describe. It has to be made in such a way. Then these are the contents of the complete specification. For those who are not exposed to that, a title should be there, field of the invention, which is the area in which invention belongs to, state of the art in the field, summary of the invention, purpose of the invention, you have to say, and then field of the invention in the sense, which is a, which is the state of the art you have to mention, which is the kind of present state of the technology, state of the art and state of the technology in which that particular invention belongs to. And then object of the purpose of the invention statement, detailed description of the invention with the uh, a reference to the drawings. Complete description should be given. And then scope or ambit of why, why invention is there, where it is going to be used, etc. has to be said, claims. Claims are the most important part. Claim define the boundary protection. You are just like when you have a property, you are saying south by so and so person, north by so and so person, you see you know, like other in your house. So similar to that, using words, you are defining a boundary. So claims are that part of a complete association which defines the boundary. And then, for example, an apparatus for catching mice comprising. If you are using the word comprising, you are, if you are saying about an equipment, you have to describe all the parts of the equipment. If you are a well-known equipment, the same way. So then a base member for placement on a flat surface, a spring member. If you are using a chemical, chemical for cleaning windows comprising of 10 to 15 percent of ammonia. And then, can anybody say what is claimed here? This is an electronics innovation. Invention. A data input device comprising an input surface adapted to be locally exposed to a pressure or pressure force. A sensor being disposed below the input surface for determining the position of the pressure or pressure force on the input surface and for outputting an output signal. An evaluative means for evaluating the output signal. Very detailed description. A single word you can say what is it? No. No, what it does? It does converting physical input to what is this called? Oh, that's very bad from say like not a transducer. What transducer is this? It's a pressure transducer. So this is the way in which you need to write the claims. So it means like uh, making it not in an understandable format for an engineer to make it understandable for a judge. That's what we are doing. Making it because JETS doesn't know what is a transducer. And then we are making it so complex for the JETS to understand, the common man to understand also. But nowadays things are changing. We are getting more and more patent codes. In India also, we will get patent codes soon. At least we have IPR division happening in uh, all the high courts now. In Delhi, it is already there. Madras, they have started. So slowly we will have uh, technically, uh, have judges having technical background. So that will happen. And then you need to have a figure, uh, or no, any number of figures you need to attach. Then you remember that your top right hand top side, you have to put the uh, total number of pages and page number of the particular figure, then application number, applicant name, etc. Other responsibilities IPR cell. If anybody comes and tells you that your patent is being infringed, you need to take action. And all other agreements you need to govern, all legal pass, uh, things IPR cell has to govern. Then comes another important factor is IP evaluation. You need to do IP evaluation, technology evaluation, IP evaluation, etc. What do you mean the evaluation valuation? The valuation is a quantified thing. Evaluation is a qualitative analysis. So you need to do IP evaluation, which includes legal status search, whether patent has been granted or not, patent grant is full, patent is in force or not, whether the patent, I mean, so many parameters are there. Whether the ownership of patent has changed, etc., etc., it's all coming under qualitative <laughs> There's a freedom of to operate searches are coming. All these things you need to for IP evaluation to understand qualitatively where does your IP stand. Then you need to do IP evaluation also include landscape analysis, including white spaces, where uh, if there are white spaces for you to work. You need to do a kind of qualitative analysis before you're starting your idea, whether after developing your IP, you'll get a white space or whether you are completely in that dark space of others. And technology evaluation is also an important factor. You need to evaluate also technologies then, whether the newly techno, whether the novelty of technology, IP landscape is the domain, and then technology feasibility studies there, 
then uh, technical compatibility, whether it's a new one, whether it's acceptable by the public, complexity, what's the complexity of the technology, then process efficacy of the product, development till maturity, uh, uh, technology benefits to the end user, uh, then uh, whether this is an advantageous technology to the public, will it be available at a lower cost, all this kind of analysis you need to do, and there's also a technology readiness avail level available. So you need to make a study of whether technology is up to the mark. If your technology is in the seven, eight, nine level, that can go directly to the uh, customer. Otherwise, you need to take them together and develop it together. There are, there are multiple ways in which uh, uh, this can be done. And technology evaluation, again, continues. The market demand is there, business opportunity, is there any revenue potential, time to commercialize. If it takes more time, then it will not be acceptable. You need to have lesser time for implementation of technology. Then comes the social attributes like uh, whether more jobs will be created, whether societal benefits are there, is there any problem for the uh, end user, is there any public perception, there won't be any problem at all with technology, but public may think that it's not useful. So public perception also dangerous. Then come to valuation of IP, you need to quantify the value of IP. What is the price of the IP you need to quantify? It's a direct mother, it's a different mother to use. And then uh, technology pricing again comes, there's a difference between IP pricing and technology pricing. Coming to technology pricing, there are multiple parameters, like the technology, may, I may offer technology for uh, 5 lakh rupees for one big company, for the same thing I may offer 50,000 rupees for a small company. Because I can have flexibility in a technology uh, licensing process. For example, I'll tell you, uh, sometime uh, we had developed technology for process, uh, converting black pepper to white pepper. And it was almost uh, 15, 20 years back. And my director, the total cost of development was 3 lakh rupees. And my director said, oh, we'll give uh, 3 lakh rupees for the first client. Then I said, that's not going to work because mostly farmers will be coming. So then suggested that we'll assume 10 uh, customers coming for that technology. We'll give it at 30,000 rupees. So we started offering at 30,000 rupees. So the first client came for 30,000 rupees. Next client came 20 people, we got at 30,000 rupees. Then I hiked the rate 50,000 rupees. We got another good number of people, 50,000 rupees. Then we went to 1 lakh rupees, 2 lakh rupees license fee. Finally, Tata took it for 5 lakh rupees plus GST. So this is the, how the costing works. You cannot have a fixed well. Now we are under technology, what we are going to do now. We have all developed technology, pricing is done. Now we are going to float as an expression of interest. So more people will come at the same rate. So there are different strategies used for technology pricing and selling. And costing is on mother, also on direct mother. And the technology transfer definition, technology transfer is application of technology for a new use or to a new user. It's a process by which a particular technology developed can be used in other area as well. So usually technology transfer comes with a package. When I transfer technology transfer, I may have to even transfer to a person who never had used the technology. So at that time, I need to give the entire documents, give them training, and also even recruit the people for them ensure that the technology works. That is how even India had taken technology from Russia, ISO had taken. The entire package was given, even scientists were not trained. So we send out scientists for training, that is how it works. So there is also a possibility that IP and technology may be together licensed. That are also opportunities. So sometimes IP alone, sometimes technology alone, sometimes both together. So for example, <laughs>
the non exclusive it can be revocable i can always say in the agreement so only for a short period i'll the after that i'll revoke it then uh, which is that i can say only you work in kerala not in tamil nadu so territory can be fixed only in india or other countries we can decide territory royalty sometimes will take only lump sum amount sometimes will take lump sum and royalty royalty 5% or the product 5 10% product etc now english property factors there are some of the english property factors involved in uh, uh, technology transfers which are type of protection whether you are taken a protection whether patented in india or other countries also whether design protection is taken whether copyrights are taken and sometimes trademarks also and support if there any really is uh, infringing your product can we really support them is another question confidential information protection is also important and assets in the license this is very very important before transferring a technology high credibility in business we have to check the morality of obeying the contracts sincere are they reliable then rational cooperative company their their economic dependence then uh, the 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 sound financial status high level of managerial efficiency adequate uh, if why are we seeking all those things suppose i have developed a new technology i may offer it to the first person if it fails nobody will come back to me for taking the technology so that is why at least the first few licenses you have to ensure that that goes to the able person who can repeat it technical competency and financial competency is also important we had cases where we failed we we transferred to some person after some time the company became bankrupt they could not implement the technology and sometimes the people people doesn't have the technical competency made impression that they have the competency they also fail the technology so this happens and in spite of all this some of the technologies fail because of low technology transfer uh, level lack of funding or for scale up if you do not get scale up funding your laboratory will not be able to scale up and then limited commercial prototypes available lack of market research study you need to do a market research study as well then only will come to know the public perception whether it can be taken to market etc lack of techno economic feasibility reports limited access to risk capital inadequate sometimes people have not taken a patent then technology will become nobody will take a technology license at that time higher technology transfer cost as i said if i had to give it as a plot for 3 lakh rupees for white paper technology nobody would have taken so all these things you have to keep in mind and nowadays we need to social scientists also along with the scientists this is what to doing market studies and everything scientists are not enough and this and the strategy of uh, patent licensing which i adopt in my office uh, which start from invention when is generated you will go for patenting after the patenting you can go for protecting the uh, technology develop the technology you can license the patent alone uh, you can sell off the patent then sell off the ip in the beginning itself we can develop the technology then license for a non exclusive exclusive basis a uh, multiple ways Now this covers other spectrum of the events. Then you draft a license. Licensing is also drafting is also the job of APR. And if they cannot do it, you can also think of employing some IP lawyers who support you. But this is the most important. But if you make mistakes in your agreement drafting, that will cost you like anything. So now to summarize, what to do if you invent? Don't publish anywhere before filing a patent application. You can either file a professional or complete application with application. You have to check for technical commercial viability, and then after complete development, you have to file a request for examination. If you are not request for examination, patent application will not be evaluated. You will get forty-eight months for filing a request for examination. You are get a patent, commercialize it. That's why you are getting a patent, not to keep it under your sleeves, and then you have to field awards. whether somebody is infringing you you need to check then only you can object against them and there are multiple careers available now apr the ipr manages the kind of job which i do technology transfer experts the kind of job which i do and then examiner of patents are there examiner of patent designs are there trademark examiners are there patent and trademark attorneys are there so there are plenty of opportunities available you can also tell your next generation kids that there are plenty of opportunities in ip we need to uh, come up and in nsc also we had a course we did a course on uh, developing pay, uh, ipr managers uh, I, I paid, uh, patent attorneys etc finally why ip matters for all of you money matters for all of you so nobody will say that money doesn't matter for you money definitely matters for all of you and ip can make you rich as well thank you any questions to be